Aloha. It's your friend, Esther, and I'm doing stand-up in your city, perhaps. Let's see. I'm coming in January to Salt Lake City, Nashville, Raleigh, North Carolina, Austin, Texas, Indianapolis, Philadelphia, and Chicago. All those dates are on estheronice.com and check out my clothing line, sleepoverbyester.com. Happy 2022, Sluggies. Come see me on the road. I'm going to be out there all year. Come see me at the Milwaukee Improv. I'll be in Naples, Florida and Tampa, Florida and a bunch more dates coming up. Please look on AndyLetterman.com slash shows. There are so many dates. I can't wait to meet you. Another week where uh, both of you guys are in hot costumes and I look like this. Well, here's the thing. You, they go, all right, the co- these are the costumes. Go get them. Esther goes, I don't want to do anything. So then the, us costumes get gotten for her. But I, I, why am I the ugly one always? You, I feel like you're trying I to change the subject. I think you should subject. be talking to your parents, honestly, about this. <laughs> I don't think that's for us. <laughs> I think you mean therapist. Uh, talk to God. <laughs> so uh, what's the deal okay. today? Everybody's past jobs, everybody. Past, past jobs. jobs. Uh, let's. Uh, First, I want to know what op- what were your options and what for the outfits? Yeah, for past jobs. I worked at Equinox. What? I worked. That's too unbelievable. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to, how how to find a costume <laughs> for that? Um, we just got your face and put it on like a really like ripped girl's body. Yeah, <laughs> I did carry out at Mangiano's briefly. Um, but I think tell us how briefly actually. John, no. And is it just you were taking your food out to the car? <laughs> I think <laughs> I might. Job. I think I might have you beat on how short of a stint, a work stint I've ever had. Why? One day at a shoe store. One fucking day. That's what's his, what's his name? Bundy. What's the shoe? Al guy? Bundy. Al Bundy. Al Bundy yeah. mm-hmm. Um, I did not last. I was oh like, God. fuck this, and I left. I didn't even collect the pay- the the paycheck for that day of work. I feel Might like have been $48. I've, I've had a similar. I When I worked at Hard Rock Cafe on Hollywood Boulevard, I only did the training <laughs> and then was let go before it came time to perform. Well, it's hard to order from someone that doesn't get taller than the counter. <laughs> they have to lean over. Uh, well, part of training did you not get past? The test. And I remember all of, I'm sure I've talked about this before, but like all of the kids and the people in my group of training were like studying hardcore like we were going to each other's apartments and studying and I was kind of like I'm gonna get through this on charm like I'm gonna like really because that's how I got through everything in my life but it worked <laughs> I didn't <laughs> it fail worked. <laughs> but the can I tell you the big issue why I didn't work out at hard rock is because we had to memorize every single ingredient on the menu item for every men- menu item including the alcohol you guys, alcohol, I've never tried it. It's mm. a foreign language to me. There was no fucking way I was going to remember no. seven ingredients. I don't take, I don't accept it. In 40 drinks. What? I don't remember. I was a bartender. I didn't know any of the fucking drinks. But either. Hard Rock was like corporate. Like it was not. No, but I'm just saying it's like I was an alcoholic and I didn't remember. I didn't know the names of the. What's the main alcohol? alcohol? The things, What's yeah. the main alcohol in a margarita, Esther? Ooh, this is good. It's. <laughs> is it Tequila. Yeah. It, it is, is tequila. Uh-huh. and it has lime uh-huh. and spicy a spice. Mm, Correct. Sometimes. No. Yeah. Okay. What, what about goes a- around the room? Chili spice. Could, could possibly. Possibly. Yeah, one. yeah. What is it? Um. It's oh salt. Salt. Very pornographic. Mm. What would you guys if we were at a cocktail bar right now? What would you guys order? Uh, uh, water? No, bitch. If you were, if, <laughs> if I wasn't a uh, recovering alcoholic, wow, Esther, this yeah. is the relapse episode. No, she's like, Re- I do drugs now. Everyone must go down. Like, what would like a cool person like you guys, if you were just wanted to be like, if this we were okay, sex if you're, in the okay, city. W- this is what you, this is how I knew people were underage. I want a Long Island iced tea, or I want <laughs> yeah. a rum and coke. Why? Or because, lemon lemon drop. Or lemon drop. It's just like young, like it's just the drinks you know. Let's say we were all this. If we were all in Sex in the City and we mm-hmm. were all at our cocktail, what would each of our drinks be? I would only one thing I drink now. It's just mezcal, and that's it. And it would be with a slice of orange and some salt, and that's it. So if a handsome young lad came up to you and was mm-hmm. like, "Can I buy you a drink?" Yeah, it would be. Uh, Should go. I'll take what you're having because that's a lad's drink. <laughs> <laughs> I ordered boyish too. I always had like I liked Glenlivet or something. I liked yeah. 
some sort of scotch or a bourbon on the rocks. What would I order? The, uh, what, do, what would you guys prescribe I think me? a Smirnoff ice. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, so that's rude because everyone's laughing. Maybe you would and have. I and I don't understand why. <laughs> well, that's why you'd get that. Because you don't understand why. Except that you are, bitch. I was a whiskey girl too. Like I was hardcore. Jaeger though too. That, Jaeger's oh. why I had to quit. I quit Jaeger before I quit anything else. The last time I drank, I had Jaeger. I went, uh-oh. <laughs> Stop it all now. Yeah, pints of Jaeger. I told you I hooked up with a guy at a bar. Like I was bartending in one bar and then like two blocks down in Santa Fe, there was this other bar, Willie's, and I was hooking up with the bartender there and I would go like blow him in the bathroom and he'd give me pints. I mean, it wasn't like an exchange <laughs> like that. It Wait, wasn't with a prostitute for them, but it just happened that way. You know what? Speaking of like that sounds really thrilling to me. Yeah. Like that is something that I would do for sport, not yeah. for pleasure in yeah. any way. Mm -hmm. And I want to ask you guys before we get into anything, um, are you into weird fetishes that involve like that are so seemingly normal that's not a true fetish? Like for instance, okay. I know. I was like, I think somebody has something they want to tell. <laughs> like, do you ever <laughs> think that setup was odd? Well, like, would you, you ever? Do you have like, for instance, like, do you have like a postman fetish? Like, I want to be in, you know, do driving you? a mail truck. You know what <laughs> I mean? What's yours? Tell us yours. A postman. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, you got something you want to say? Say it. I want to deliver mail. I... Is that true? Um, I have weird ones, I think. That I have you multiple do. fetishes. Like I a role think. Is that a fetish no, or I, like um, you want a job you want to do? I'm Is not sure. Oh, circle back, circle back. I think it's like both. It's, yeah. it's like, like for me, I feel like a role play that I gravitate towards is like, I don't want to say. <laughs> that Dave's a girl. <laughs> <laughs> It's so, at this point, it's just, it writes itself. You know? It really, it really writes itself. I, um, no, I don't. Uh, I want to hear, say it. I need you to yeah, say, say it. it. I feel like it's hot to be like a, like an escort or something. Like I like that. Oh, totally. I, really? A okay. thousand percent. To be paid? Yeah, like what's your thoughts on But that? by your partner, by like Todd. Yeah, not like a stranger. Not a stranger. Oh it's like a role play. Todd pays me for sex, that's funny. Like they're just money no, it's not it. a joke. <laughs> We're not asking you if it's funny or not. <laughs> uh, life is a joke. Uh, that is how I get through it. What is my role play? And he's like, I pay Todd for sex. <laughs> I pay Todd for life. <laughs> Thank you, dear Todd. Wait, I do have that fetish. I, not fetish. Role, I, I would You're like a that. kept man. I think we talked about this with yeah. Hannah. I wouldn't be opposed to just like having a bitch boy. Yeah, Explain. but then you get them and it's like, I don't know. I just feel like I've lived on my fantasies, honestly. Like anything, I dated the older guy. I did all that. I'm like, this isn't, I had like a, a rich older guy when I was 21 that lived in Santa Fe when I was a go-go dancer, which we'll get to, um, who would, he was like working on a movie. He came into town and he was working on a movie and he like would take me to the spa and stuff. And it was just like, take me to fancy dinners. But and you guys would hook up. Yeah. That's and it was fun. Like, we fucked in the woods and stuff. But I told you, when we fucked in the then I had like a twig in my pussy later. There's always like, <laughs> there's always a that. twig in your pussy after these things. So you you're know saying I mean? like the reality of it is not. I've already done it. I don't know. I guess I just don't. I mean, and who knows? Maybe I'll have a second wind of all of this at some point. But I just feel like I've done it. Like I've fucked in public. I used to always bang in bathrooms. I used to think it was funny to like hook up like where people peed. Like. <laughs> Like, yeah, let's go make out by the, like, the piss, wall, by <laughs> the, the piss wall. People, I said Esther. <laughs> Not dogs. Esther, in Esther's mind, the dog park is just people walking people. <laughs> but um, I will say that I was listening to like a Gwyneth Paltrow podcast. Don't oh no. don't judge me. I don't know why. Like I'm not even into that. But she did say they were talking about like young women's sexuality. And she was like, when she grew up, she was taught, like, sex is bad. Like, don't ever talk about it. It's bad, bad, bad. And she was saying how, like, today it should be, like, that it's a good thing that women should experience pleasure. And, like, even ask them, like, what are – they should explore – young women should explore, like, what are your kinks? And I was like, wow, to hear someone like Gwyneth Paltrow, like, Miss, like, Prissy Goop say that, I was like, oh, I think that's – I bet you should get some goop in some weird places <laughs> on that body. Right. It's pretty goopy. Ooh, I bet you there's a lot. She's steaming that pussy for a reason. Why does it need to be so flat? Why does it need to be so – I the guess wrinkles out. <laughs> it depends who you're surrounded by. I think I got the wrong message about sex um, because a lot of the people, the a lot of the women around me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, besides all the rapings, besides the serial rapings, <laughs> I had um, 
what I saw was like women using it to sort of get by and women that I loved and really like respected and like looked up to. And I thought it was just a way to get what I needed in life, like get what you want. Is that what you're dressed as? That That's this the job? Is, <laughs> that's a job you're dressed as? <laughs> this right here. Can- Why are you trying to fuck us, Kalila? <laughs> This right here, guys, is, um, I don't know if you guys know, but I worked for Abercrombie and Fitch for a couple of years. This is a good Abercrombie. This is an unreal. Unlikely, per- the most unlikely person to work at Abercrombie got recruited to work at well, Abercrombie. Well, I've seen okay. your abs. Yeah. You could have been shirtless you outside can, that. Yes, you're not white, but bitch, you're hot. So like. But I'm saying like my insides don't match their oh, company policies. I thought it was a racist well, issue. Any- <laughs> <laughs> which it should be. It should be. Yes. You know what? I'm we brought this <laughs> But I did work at the Glendale Galleria. And, um, you know, the saddest part about that job was telling regular sized girls that we didn't have their size. What? It was like, nope, we stop at this particular size. And they were regular sized girls. It's so funny how Abercrombie was like everything. When I was in middle school, it was like Abercrombie was yeah. it. There was nothing else. And then I kind of got over it. I turned into more of a slut. It wasn't slutty enough for me. Well, I think they would also. But I guess with my size going in there, getting the extra (laughs) larges, it's still like pretty slutty. (laughs) I can't believe they've survived as a company. It's wild. Same with American Eagle. Yeah, there's so many lawsuits. You know what I think Hollister survived? Oh, you mean because of Hollister? Abercrombie and Hollister are the same. Same company. Hollister, Rule. I think I'm pretty sure how Hollister stays afloat. Every Mexican person that comes in to America shops at Hollister. I think it's foreign it's person. Solamente. Not uh, just. I think every foreign person is like the most American thing. Yeah, I guess so. I guess I was just. I, oh, you it's know, like I only see Mexicans. Dressing <laughs> in Hollister is like a like a feti- like an American fetish. But it's like we don't wear it as much as the not anymore. Imposters. That's a, well, that's the thing I was going to ask. It's like, is it relevant? Like, does it have any sort of relevancy right now? I ever Well, are they? Do they're not doing the hot guys outside anymore, right? No, Which thank was God, the only they're reason. not. And you know thank how God. they would protect themselves is because they really just would hire what they considered good-looking employees. Yeah. But to protect themselves, they would hire the uggos but they put them in the stock room yes or work like room. the night shift to like do the like the folding at were the you end in of the shift. stock room with johnny rockets <laughs> sometimes <laughs> it was small how long did you work there again i worked it was there. small no i worked there like maybe like set six months or something like so that like three weeks no i was there a while i got i went and got hired their senior year of high school and then worked halfway through the no towards the end of the summer and it was before you know going to college and i got my boyfriend a job there and then he fucking started he left me for another waitress at johnny rocket and did you quit right after that yeah is that the one you wrote and then you were in her dance class the one no, no. that's okay. someone else oh you get cheated on <laughs> that's <Wait>. cute <laughs> esther i want to know how you um would take my order okay well one we'll of them, start with annie well first of all welcome to johnny rockets um a right away i remember a where big- is the sound coming from i don't see anyone where are you <laughs> sir is there a mouse i think i hear a mouse i actually thrived at johnny rockets because we had the 50s music we made the smiley face ketchup i i got by on my charm um i remember old ladies would come up to me and be like your service is just like in the old days too because you're so friendly and happy I <laughs> and would- slow they had such lower expectations <laughs> back in the day they didn't have like the internet they weren't used to getting things right away but huge pro tip Everyone always wonders, do the burgers come with fries? They don't. You have to order your fries separate. That's Blasphemy. Criminal. So people were always a little bit annoyed because the burgers were a more premium price. Did you price. tell them ahead of, ahead of time? I would always be like, just so you guys know, like you have to order the fries separate. With your little hands, you do that? <laughs> we made our own milkshake. So I scooped the ice cream myself. Um, Oreo Ugh. milkshake. I, I left every ship with I would Oreo be like, milkshake. I need to make sure that person does not touch my food. <laughs> <laughs> I need a different food runner. Also, what if you were just the food runner? That would have been cute. We serve some a uh, Midwest classic that you won't see normally is um, a slice of apple pie <sighs> with a slice of cheese on top. Did you have to do that? Yes. I did You're on ketchup piece. duty? Yes. Smiley face? My How heart? now did Carlos have to wear an outfit too when he came to do the smiley face <laughs> for you? Carlos wasn't born yet. <laughs> Carlos like pops in and just starts. Esther, um, Miss, I've been here for twenty minutes now. So You've been sorry. giving me the specials, but still no menu. Oh, okay. Let me. Um, what are yeah? What are the specials of the day? So we don't have specials here at Johnny Rockets. It's a standard menu, but I think you guys will be really happy with your choices. Sorry, one second. Such a liar, little actress. Look at her. <laughs> No. Oh, to go. That's a little rude. Trying to get rid of us already. Well, that's Pete, the producer's <laughs> that's fault. Pete has fucked up. 
<laughs> Annie, I want you to ask. I want you to Esther. Annie, <laughs> I want you to order the way you think Esther would order. Can you read the menu to me? Sure. So, would you? Are you in the mood for a burger? But what's the? Where's the meat from? Oh, I see. <laughs> this is I see what this is. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't see for a while. That's weird. <laughs> Oh, the, I remember the Route 66. I always thought it sounded so weird, but was so popular. It's Swiss cheese, grilled mushrooms, caramelized onions, and mayo. And we have that as a single or a double option. Guys, if this is interesting to the audience, I don't know what interesting is. Is anyone? <laughs> here's my question. Does anyone have a doing. Johnny Rockets fetish? Is does, anyone getting turned on? <laughs> does anybody? Here's what I want to know. Do, can we bring up rhubarb pie? When we're <laughs> <laughs> oh, I want to know that. Do you have any desserts? Yes. We, I just, as I said, we have a slice of apple pie. We have milkshakes. They're hand scooped. And we offer cheese on Hand scooped. You just scoop right in, huh? <laughs> I know you think it's funny, but hand scooped is a big deal in the milkshake game. A lot of them don't actually hand scoop the ice cream. I'm gonna go home. I do like <laughs> no, no. I like I like a little like a hint of just like a chunk suffering. Like I want yeah. I want my my server to be like slammed and like oh now I gotta scoop the fucking ice cream too. And we we make, that's what I'm paying for. The servers make the milkshakes and we make the fries ourselves too. So if you order, how do you yourself, make the fries? You just dip them. Wow. And you, they go in a basket and you dip them in the oil and the timer. And they let off. you have those responsibilities? Mm -hmm. And then you can add chili and cheese. And what was your cream. hourly pay? You know what's crazy is in Illinois, waiter, when I was working, we got, servers got like $3 an hour. Yeah. And you worked off tips. But in California, servers get like, I think a normal. I got like, when I was a waitress in New York not that long ago, like maybe 10 years ago, it was two fifty, I think. What? Isn't yeah, you got $2.50 and then you get your tips. Yeah, but so in that's California, why when people, you get And a then you wage. get taxed on, automatically taxed on 10% of your tips. So if people pay you under, tip you under 10%, you're paying. I mean, imagine the rage bubbling inside you when just no one tips. Yeah. And there are, what's fucked up is that like tipping is sort of a, not just an American thing, but it's like, sort of an American thing. In other countries, they don't tip a lot. So you have a lot of foreigners that come through who don't yes. don't understand the tipping culture. So they might tip you really poorly, you know, and um, I can't imagine having to hand scoop something and then get paid two bucks. Yeah, well, that is also a big reason why I sort of started to realize that Hard Rock Cafe on Hollywood Boulevard wasn't going to be good because it was going to be all tourists yeah. and they were oh, not going to Oh, it would have been horrible tip. unless like, you could autograph, yeah. Yeah. I had yeah. these French people come in once to when I worked at Life Cafe, it's where Jonathan Larson wrote Rent. Holy fuck. Yes, it was Thompson Square Park. It was on 10th and B. No day but two. But I made a big point to not know any of the songs. Okay, well, that's People don't go, what's now? your favorite song? I go, the last one. <laughs> <laughs> the holidays are stressful. We oh. did it. And we got through it, but we are still. Needing a little help, aren't we? We got the new year coming up. We got to figure out what our intentions are for the Life future. Life is stressful. It's stressful. Work is stressful. That's why we all love our sponsor, BetterHelp. Oh, thank you, BetterHelp. Check out betterhelp.com slash trash Tuesday. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can connect in a safe and private online environment. It's so convenient. You um, can start communicating in under 48 hours and it's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It is professional counseling done securely online and you can send a message to your counselor at any time and you know i'm up late <laughs> and honestly it's about to be a new year and like if you're not getting your mental health game on point like i don't know what you're doing because it's the single most important thing to having a happy successful life. and if i were a single girl that would be just a requirement for me like ask the guy like how are, what's your mental health game like? Are you getting help? Are you seeing a therapist? If a guy you is better not- better get better help. <laughs> no, no, no. Literally, if a guy is not getting help like that, like a therapist or better help, mm -mm. It's a wrap. There's Don't no reason. Don't waste your time. Mm -hmm. There's no reason. And this service is avail available to clients worldwide. Find the particular expertise you need online. Don't limit yourself to counselors located near you. We want you to start living a happier life today. And as a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor at betterhelp.com slash trash Tuesday. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash trash Tuesday. I love Stitch Fix. I love it. I All I've wanted my whole life is to just have 
someone pick my clothes out for me and bring them to me. Yeah, I, and then you get to choose too. You yeah. don't need to keep all the stuff that they mail you. you and then you, they let you send it back. It's I honestly, when I go, I've had so many times I've gone to the store and I get all the stuff, I do all the shopping, I see the line and I go, nope, and I just leave it. Same. I just leave it and go, sorry to all the retail workers that have had to deal with that, but I gotta go. <laughs> I have a panic attack. Stitch Fix fixes all of that. Introducing, by the way, Stitch Fix Freestyle, mm -hmm. a shop that is built just for you. Stitch Fix Freestyle is your trusted style destination where you can discover and instantly buy curated items based on your style, likes, and lifestyle. Whether you're looking for a brand you love or to try a new one, which is so much fun, at Stitch Fix Freestyle, you can shop a range of over a thousand brands personalized to your size and fit. It is so convenient. Where has this been my whole life? Like, why didn't I have this when I was a teenager? With styles for workouts, to workwear, for lounging around the house, or for a night out on the town, Stitch Fix Freestyle has clothes for any occasion. Plus, there's no subscription required, which is this Jewish girl's favorite part. And they offer free shipping, returns, and exchanges. Get started today by filling out your style quiz at stitchfix.com slash Tuesday. That's stitchfix.com slash Tuesday to try Stitch Fix Freestyle. stitchfix.com slash Tuesday. So much fun. <laughs> but we had these like rent registers so people would come from all over there were a lot of Japanese fans there were always a lot of Japanese people that would come and like order they'd find the cheapest thing on the menu and they'd give you exact change and then they'd come just to sign the rent register which was just yeah. like a book and people would like sign that they were there but these, this group of French people once came in and they ordered just drinks which you know you're a little bit like okay we're not gonna be getting any sales today <laughs> but they ordered just drinks they wanted these refills they were being so annoying but I was still being nice and uh I bring them their drinks. I bring them their check. Um, they, in the place where it's supposed to be tip, they have a frowny face. And they wrote, um, <gasps> you were rude to us because we we're French and you didn't think we were going to tip. And I wasn't rude to them. I like wasn't rude to them. I was like, this is such a fun French scam to like, you've you've gaslit me. It's yeah. my fault. I didn't, you know. And, and, and then my other customers, like all my regulars, because I was like, look, I wasn't a good waitress. You weren't going to get the right food, but you were going to have fun in the process. Okay. <laughs> Tip the personality, I always said, and the tits. And, or not the tits. I go, don't tip the tits. Tip the personality. And oh then, my um, God. So that I used to get, I sometimes I would go up to people and I would go, I would go 50% tip is, it would it would be rude to get anything less than a 50% tip. <laughs> Just like joking. But then sometimes they would give me a 50% tip. It was crazy. You as a server is the equivalent of a, like being at a show where it's an ambush open mic. Yeah, it's an open, it was that. And I did have an open mic at Life Cafe called Living It Up. Or not an open mic, a, a show. show. What are your thoughts on this? My friend who was a server at Tony Roma, you know how you have to automatically add gratuity if it's over like yes, six yeah. people Eight or whatever. People. Yes, you do not tell them and you hope they double grat. Is that what you're going to say? Right, but there was this fan... I'll tell you guys who it is later. But he came in with a party of like 13 people and she was slammed at yeah. Tony, fucking Tony Romas like 15 years ago. And she Great served rips. him and she added the gratuity. And you know what he said? He was like, if you had not added this, I would have given you quadruple the tip. Like he thought it was rude that she did that. Like who do you it's think? It's just the it's just the system everywhere. That's yeah, and and comedy like, clubs. But saying like, how fucking dare you think I wouldn't tip you? So you automatically got it. And she was like, no, it's I had to. Like this is policy. If you want to think people are being racist towards you, you will find evidence. And a lot of times it's just uh, the the anagram. Yeah, <laughs> but that was so weird with the with the French people. Where I was like, I'm not like being racist or like discriminating against you. Yeah. I just am not that good at my job. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think the autograd thing was like the dream was when they wouldn't notice that you autograd it and they would double. You're like, oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I just got so much money. <laughs> I'm rich. 38%. I'm rich. You I think in Tesla? Australia, they don't work for tips, <laughs> but their servers get like a minimum of like $25 yeah. an Yeah. Well, I remember when I was in Australia, they're, yeah, you're not, there's no tipping. But they get, they get really good hourly that's better i think it's better too it's so much no better. it's so fun to have the excitement of not knowing how much you're gonna make oh, i'm God. telling you you're i made insane. the most out of the i'm not trying to be the cocky <laughs> server but i made the most money i always like it was so fun i got to talk to people i was like working out bits no, it was so i fun. liked i literally Wasn't loved so my fun? job at johnny yeah. rocket wait i did see on tiktok that there was a stripper who was like it's not the hottest girls who leave with the most money it's the the good talkers, the really? people who can really charm you with a personality who can, yeah. So, dude, I was also. I, I just want to say I was also the hot, I was also the hottest waitress. <laughs> I just want to say I also was the hottest waitress. I, Oops. Um, whoa, 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 whoa! I just got a, a trash Tuesday challenge 
we all have to work a night at a strip club okay. <laughs> and see who makes the most money. I'm going to lose this so bad. <laughs> yeah. What? No, but you'll be like the mysterious one. Maybe. And he's going to be like the blonde chatty one. You're going to be the one in sweatpants. <laughs> <laughs> I might have Sucking to... the girl's nipples. You're going to be the one giving Kalila dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I have to forfeit instantly. Why is she paying me, Annie? <laughs> no. <just> so... <laughs> I'll probably have to go for like a school girl. Like I have to have my last hurrah being like this. The... Honestly, you wearing the sluttiest thing still looks like a school girl wearing the sluttiest thing <laughs> or school boy I really think you just got a bank on a pedophilia is what yeah, I think like really play really into easy. that yeah in like this goddamn town <laughs> <laughs> we're going to the body shop tonight you're gonna be rich bitch what looks would you guys wait so you're a what are you today well I am um, this is my I'm I'm uh the time of my life when I was a go-go when I was a I was a nanny by day and uh Go go dancer by night. Oh, <laughs> we got an outfit change. Wait, hold on. Let's squish that. Don't try to look at my labia. So you'd watch the kids and then you take off your overalls. Let's just say there was a lot of glitter involved in all my jobs. <laughs> and I would my knees hurt because I was like would be dancing all night and then I would go to like crouch down to like play with the kids and I would collapse to the ground. <laughs> I tried to get chicken cutlets, but I couldn't find any. I, your boobs look your massive. Boobs look. But I bought the bombshell bra that I used to wear. <gasps> and I have the glitter. And I would always, I would always have like a fake eyelash stuck to my cheek, which I would have done. But I, have, I don't want to ruin my fake spray tan. So Wait. you already have experience for the Trash Tuesday stripper challenge. I do have a little experience, yeah. Oh, God. But I was hoping it was gonna be like a waitressing challenge. Oh well, let's do like that too. Like where we just get a job one night. Great. Yep. I feel like I'm low on the stripper energy, high on the escort energy. Okay. Mm. Oh. Like I think I would. You'll kill. fuck. You're not a tease. You, no, you I'll to... fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'll fuck anything. Not a tease. No, She's no, going no. all the way. <laughs> so the strippers bad. are it's, just like it's easier. I feel strippers are selling a fantasy. Yeah. So are escorts. Escorts are fucking them though. That's a fantasy though. Yeah, but so you guys are better actors than me. So the selling you guys would nail. Mm, you I don't mind. Maybe just, we sell you them. You really think Esther's a good actor? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Maybe we could this could, we could turn this into like a Trash Tuesday business where Kalifa's an escort. <laughs> I and really we get twenty five percent. This is good. This is a good idea. <laughs> I, I'm going to take it one step further uh -oh, and give great. myself, compliment myself. I say, I think that I have really good, um, I'm high on the pimp energy. I think I could have a harem. Mm. Okay. And, and, and take good, really good care of my girls. Like really good care. How like so? I'm mother hen. What would you do for us? Medical insurance, baby. <laughs> Medical insurance. Tested. Daycare. 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 Herpes, AIDS. We test for all of it. The testing is just baseline. Yeah. Everything Daycare. else. Listen. You, you get your hair done whenever you want. Mommy, you know, my, my, um, my roots are coming in. That's okay, babe. Yeah, get them done. Here you go. Would you cover, would wow. you cover the cost for them to get... Um, their cesarean scars lasered off. Oh yeah, you got keloids. I got you, babe. <laughs> yeah, I think I have like big mother hen. Yeah, yeah. Esther, um, you left because of a boyfriend. I left Johnny Rockets. Yes, because of a boyfriend. What is? Would you say you've ever had a really bad boss? I don't think so. I I don't. I'd have to really think, but definitely not a Johnny Rockets. I absolutely loved my managers. Um, yeah, I feel like I've always had a good relationship with my superiors. <laughs> right, George? Are Can't you? imagine. <laughs> Can't oh. imagine. Um, what about you guys? Like, did you have a boss as a go-go dancer? Or you yeah, it was this, it was uh, these two gay guys that owned the club, the nightclub. Let and me I guess they loved cry. you. No, I don't know why. <laughs> it was very weird. I had, no one knew why I was there. It was like, I was just there drunk one night and my friend was the manager and was like, do you want to make 50 bucks an hour? Go dance on the podium. Holy shit. And I was like, okay. And then That's I would get 50 tips too. Bucks. That's pretty good. And then the owner would come by and tip us. I can't remember what his name was, but he would tip us all 50 bucks. And sometimes he would pass you and not give you the 50. I'd go, um, I guess it's not tonight, not for me. Um, but I would go in, I remember, because I would get so drunk and I'd be like crying. I would drink because I needed like liquid courage to do it. And... Um, and I felt like it would fall off the podium. I was like bad. I was a bad go-go dancer. And so I went in crying. I was like, they're objectifying me. They're trying to touch me. To the guy working, he goes, you don't have to work here. Like, nobody's making it. I was like, oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Is a go-go dancer, you're just like basically 
dancing sexy, but you keep your clothes on. Yeah, is the, you wear yeah. like this outfit. And yeah. Dance. yeah, that's like, but I feel like that's like, like a like a hard job. You're sweating. You're fucking. Yeah, but it was only like three hours, three two nights a week. Really, it was like nothing. It's you're basically getting paid to do your workout. Yeah. It was good, but it was gross. Like, and one time the people I was nannying for came to the, like see me dance, and I was like, "Have you been trying to fuck me?" Well, okay, wait a second. <laughs> you to Line me crossed. What? Well, I couldn't lie about being a girl. It's like it, I was so obviously Why coming did they from go? something. Go. I think I invited them. <laughs> okay, so you're the problem. <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird. I'm a go-go dancer, and you're a go-go queen. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, my bad boss was a man named but I used to work at LA Fitness and I was in high school, I was 16 and he would have me come into his office and read him my poems that you hate, Esther. What? <laughs> yeah, and That's then he would so randomly at the end of the week, he'd re- cut me a check and be like, here's 200 bucks. Like, have fun with yourself. You're so you were girl. an escort? <laughs> <laughs> I guess I started young. You were an, you were an, un, you were an unassuming escort. Yeah, and... um. But that's I he was still relatively nice and I appreciated the end of week checks. But now when I look back at it, I was like, oh, he was he was angling for more. It just never really happened. But LA Fitness. How old was he? In his late 40s or 50s, I think. So gross. I, I had a bad boss, but it wasn't a molesty boss. I had a boss at Color Me Mind. Did I talk about this? You worked <laughs> at Color Me I worked Mind? At, that was my first job. I was 15, I think. Yeah, I worked at Color Me Mind in Philadelphia and the owner was this really insane bipolar woman like I mean really really crazy and uh right before Christmas but there would be like a limit like if you want to finish like if you want to put your kid's handprint on a thing and give it to their grandparents you need to get it in by this time and Mm. we guarantee it'll be fired and ready to go for Christmas so that time comes around and it's like our busiest time and the owner is going through a divorce with her husband and is having a mental break because she went to go to court for her divorce hearing and they pushed it just because it was the holidays and things were busy or something. So like we have to push the court date. And she got fixated on the mayor of Philadelphia, Mayor Ed Rendell, and decided it was he was sabotaging her and trying to ruin her life. So she made us shut down, put all the paper that they put on the tables on the windows, we papered up the windows. And we had to put a note that said, none of your pieces are going to be ready for Christmas. If you have a problem with that, call Mayor Ed Rundell. Oh, wow. And she had us put his number there. And oh, then fuck yeah. she had she had gotten in a fight with her. Her and her ex-husband were meeting at a park to discuss something. And she brought like a, a spear that she had from like some travels or something she had hanging on her wall. She brought the spear to like attack him with. And so he ran, got in his car, drove off. She chased him, got in a car accident, like hit a tree or something. She went forward and like she either like spit coffee out or she threw up a little. She had like a little vomit here. And so in that moment, she doesn't call the cops. She doesn't call anyone. She calls our manager, this guy, Neil, who was like probably 20 or something, but I thought he was an adult. And he was a photographer. So he she made him bring his camera, take pictures of her looking like she's dead in the car. Yes. And then she pasted together yes. a, a Philadelphia Inquirer article, like the front page of the newspaper with that picture. And it says, so-and-so died in car crash. And then you turn, the, she faxed that page over to the mayor's office. And then she faxed another one and said, you wish Mayor Ed Rendell. <laughs> I'm 15. I'm like, um, uh, this, my mom dropped me off. Like, should I get a ride home? And then um, this set the tone for the rest of your so life. So everyone's like calling. We had to put the phone off the hook because everyone's calling the mayor's. The mayor's office is like, what the fuck is going on? Why are we getting all these calls? And then later she did uh, kill herself. So, oh, yeah, she shit. Ended up Not like while I was still working there a, year, a couple of years later or whatever. I have a suicide boss. <laughs> <laughs> I the OK hear me out when i first moved to la right before i moved here i went to my cousin's wedding and there was a woman at her wedding who was my dream woman she was a beverly hills boss ass bitch she was wearing a bb wrap dress she was fucking gorgeous perfect fake nose just absolutely perfect and she immediately took to me and we like spent the whole wedding just chatting and I was like asking her questions and she was giving me all this life advice and she's like oh if you're moving to LA like I live there she's like you should come work for me because I always need help I was like great I'm I'll be there I'll call let you know when I come so like you know fast forward six months I end up dropping out of school I moved to LA 
I call her. She's like, great, come work for me. So literally like when I drove to Los Angeles, the next morning, like I got in Sunday Wait, night. Wait, what was the job? Sorry, I missed that part. So it was, I was just going to help her Be out. Be like her assistant, yeah. So literally got to LA like Sunday on a Sunday night at like, you know, 11 p.m. Oh I God. started work for her the next morning on Monday. I showed up at 7 a.m. Like beautiful, like Beverly Hills mansion. And I walk in. She's like, oh, I'm so glad you're here. She's in a robe. She's like, my knee is hurting. I need you to drive today. I was like, what? Okay. I literally just got to LA. Like, She's like where are the phone books? So basically, like, she just, like, took me around, and I was, like, her helper, and also she had two kids, so I would kind of help with the kids, and she was, like, an L.A. bitch, she, like, in a good way, but also bad way, because we went out to lunch, and I remember the kids wanted dessert, and when the waitress came to me, she was like, Esther doesn't need dessert. She's on a diet. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> and that's where it all began. <laughs> I was like, cool. Was like, uh, what if I scoop it myself? Is that... <laughs> And actually, there was so much like early day LA trauma from this experience because then when her one of her friends came over to like help me get ready for this woman's who I was working for her second wedding, and she was sitting down with me like packing gifts or whatever, and I remember the friend was like, "So why'd you come to LA?" And I was like, "Uh, to like to do like creative stuff." Comedy. How old were these people? They were probably in their 40s, like women in their 40s, mm -hmm. like from L.A. Born They're probably like 28, but <laughs> we're older now. So we're like, that was probably. No, I would say like late 30s, early 40s. And I was 21. And um, she's like, what brought you to L.A.? I'm like, oh, I'm like really into comedy. She's like, oh, you didn't just come here to meet a man. And I was like, no. Uh, but looking back, don't you wish? <laughs> looking back, I'm like, that was great advice. <laughs> uh, you pursue your dreams later. Yeah. But anyways, so I had this like crazy three month like affair working for this amazing woman and she ended up firing me because like and ultimately all I did was like eat all her snacks and like I was bad at everything. <laughs> and then during COVID, for some reason, Dave was talking about actually a mutual friend of ours who gets like these really like high-end stock tips mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and oh, I I know who yes. and I googled uh -huh. this billionaire that mm -hmm. like is a you know three people removed from me but like there's this billionaire mm -hmm. who I heard about and I googled him and I noticed his last name was the same last name as that woman and I was like weird oh my god I was like oh my god like I always knew she was rich but I didn't know her ex was a billionaire so I google her and like what is she up to now and like I see that she was um already on her third marriage like I was involved in the second marriage and she's already moved on a third billionaire oh another billionaire yeah she married another billionaire and then some people just know how to do that I, don't think, I think I've met one billionaire and bitch, I had no clue they were billionaire this was like the person to learn that from and then I kept like googling her and she killed herself Oh, shit. She hung herself. Yeah, she fucking committed suicide. Damn. I okay, was, do not try to get a rich man. <laughs> it does not end well. But I was like, why? Like, I I was just in so much shock when I discovered it because I really had this woman on a pedestal, which I know sounds crazy, but sorry. Um, no, she had you on a pedestal so she could look you in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I was just like, wow, like, you can marry billionaires and still not be happy. <laughs> Who would have thought? You know what I like? This is what I take from this whole thing. This is where you learned how to treat Carlos. <laughs> like, do things for me. But you much respect, silly dreams. rest in peace. Like, obviously, it's a very tragic story, and I'm very sad, and I appreciate all my time with her. Did she leave jewels or heirlooms for you? <laughs> she did not. <laughs> for her favorite little L.A. girl. <laughs> you should have stuck around longer, Esther. Um... Honestly, how many free trial subscriptions do you end up getting that cost you like thousands of dollars because you're stupid and you don't cancel them? Wait, 69. 69, 69. 69. Oh, sorry. Actually, 420. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that my niece had um, borrowed my iPad and subscribed to a very expensive premium anime streaming service that I have just been paying for for the last four years. <laughs> Who told you about it though? Who told you about it? True Bill. Thank you, True Bill. Really? We dude. love we love a good anime, but not for that price. So thank you, True Bill. True Bill is the new app that helps you identify and stop paying for subscriptions that you don't need or want or you simply forgot about. And on average, people save up to $720 a year with True Bill. Do you know what True Bill taught me? What? That I have two, um, Apple accounts oh. and I had double subscribed. Yeah. 
I double subscribed to things that I shouldn't have been subscribing to at, at all. all. <laughs> <laughs> because companies make subscriptions hard to cancel and Truebill makes it incredibly simple. Just link your accounts and Truebill will cancel your unwanted subscriptions in one tap. And your Truebill concierge is there when you need them to cancel unwanted subscriptions so you don't have to. You guys, don't fall for subscription scams. Start canceling today at Truebill.com slash Trash Tuesday. Go right now, Truebill.com slash Trash Tuesday. It could save you thousands a year. And we're not even kidding. Yeah, don't get scammed, all right? Slugs should not be getting scammed. <sighs> There's you know, no shame No, listen. in not always being able to get it up. But yes. we'd like it to be up because there's it's, blue chew. There's blue chew. There's, there's really no, no more excuses. It's so easy. It's chewable. You don't even have to say, I don't like swallowing pills. Just chew it. It's chew it chewable. and then you get to do it. We'll really appreciate it. <laughs> Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. And you can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity arises, which is kind of a gift because with this other stuff that there used to, like back in the day, you used to have to plan yes, and then, way in advance. And listen, things happen. Yeah. All right, we didn't have cell phones. How you couldn't even call someone and tell him you were going to show up. You just left this guy with a raging heart on. <laughs> and he just, what is he going to do? And what I love is the process is so simple. You sign up at bluechew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers. And once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. Yep. In a discreet package, by mm. the way. Um, Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA and prepared and shipped direct to your door. And the best part, it's all done online, so no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at a pharmacy. So if you could benefit from extra confidence when it's time to perform, Blue Chew can help. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code TUESDAY at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's bluechew.com, promo code TUESDAY to receive your first month free. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. Ladies, Blue Chew is exclusively for men, but the end result is something you'll both enjoy. So get your man to sign up. Did you ever see the movie, uh, The Map of the Stars, or A Map of the Stars? It's a lot like, mm -mm. it's like a, like a rich Hollywood woman and her assistant and stuff. You might like it. Really? Yeah, it's really weird and creepy, and it has a lot of like, there's a weird incest. The whole storyline is kind of an incest storyline, but. I'm going to tell Carlos to watch it and then tell and me how, what it's like. Cliff notes. <laughs> You're like, I'm busy looking at the ceiling. <laughs> I can't be bothered with television interrupting my ceiling staring. <laughs> I must do nothing. This is such a good point of how you are just the listener and never talk when we're friends. I've never heard that story. I don't even know. I'm like, you had a job more than Johnny Rockets? And I only heard about Johnny Rockets on the show. And also, like, you, you're the best storyteller. What? It's very from, like, linear. It's very clear from beginning to end. Interesting. Uh, it's stories don't have to have that. <laughs> I like to, and, you don't know where it's coming they're from. They're more fun when you don't yeah, know it's what like, part. Hey, where, who, what? Where are we? What room are we in? When are we? <laughs> <sighs> what are you guys' thoughts on people who don't share their food? Like if you're in a group together and you're eating, have you ever been around someone who's been like, hey, like don't touch my plate? Yes, mm -hmm. that's me and you know it. No, we shared food yeah. <laughs> just last week. I, up until very recently, like had fo a phobia of a group dinner where everyone shares. Like I, I just couldn't. I did not get that vibe from you at all. We shared a pierogi. We split one. What's a pierogi? <laughs> Remember Bobby was like, this thing is the most delicious thing on earth. And we were it's like, like yeah, yeah, thing. yeah. A pierogi is very, it was like a, that little a thing. Like empanada. Yeah, it's like shaped like an empanada. Was I? And there was cheese inside. Were you there? Was I? You were the potato. You were the pierogi. Esther, to be fair, I don't think you were technically there. You were so in the sky. Oh, I was high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, um, I am better about it now, but I don't know. What about you? Are you? I like when people share. Like, I, I think, think it's so more too. fun to like have because you can order everything. But if someone doesn't want to share, I don't give a shit. It's fine. That's good. If that's like their boundary, I don't care. But just tell me ahead of time because I will be reaching over. I've definitely been the person at a group dinner where I'm like, okay, like you guys do your thing, but You're I'm like, I'll have my rice. I just want this and I don't want anyone else to touch it, mm. which I know is, is, does that make me sound like a jerk? Is that bad? Who cares? Just mm. be yourself. You're annoying. Kalila's, you are a little bit difficult. Kalila's very quiet. I'm trying to. I'm trying to think no, she's of like, like. She's going. Do 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 do
do, do, do. What is, yes, Esther, that's very annoying. What is next question? <laughs> I um, I have this realized with my, I stopped smoking weed, so it's four days I haven't smoked weed. How do you Why? feel? I feel good. I, I am not, it does not serve me. What it does for you, it does not do for me. What does it do to you? It uh, makes me eat too much. It makes me like just foggy headed. I'm not focused on things that I want to focus on. I, you know, I have this whole hypnosis thing I want to do and I just like completely start smoking weed again and just don't even think about it. Okay. It just keeps it me keep, off track. Yeah. It like, it really like aggravates my ADD. It just like makes me more just you know and i think eventually it builds up and it makes me like more like raw in a way that's not good so how does this feel now on day four it feels great i feel good i mean i've done it before i always okay. enjoy quitting smoking weed it always feels good and then i convince myself it's like a fomo thing like i'll be like well if esther can eat weed then i should be able to eat weed but it's like everyone like reacts different to things you know but i never like have that much fun it doesn't make my experience more fun ever but I was the other day before I quit smoking weed. I've had two guests over for the popcorn machine, okay? And that's one of the draws is the popcorn machine. So we have, and we have a big TV and a surround sound. I'm like, come, let's Look eat the popcorn. Let's Look watch how popcorn. sad she is that she wasn't one of those two I, yeah, people. I was like, wait, people are already coming over. No, because she'll make me drive her over for the so popcorn her machine. Up. If you can find a ride, bitch, you can come over. I, I can't be responsible for the transportation, though. I might take you up on that oh my god esther if we're gonna become like if you want to become like friend friend friends where i you know what i realized it would have to be what i would have to hire a car service for you <laughs> to come to me <laughs> your assistant no we'll just get carlos um <laughs> carlos solves all the problems but so i invited two couples over okay two couples came over this was separate you times. know two couples i have friends baby <laughs> i got friends <laughs> Uh, my the first couple was Haley and Curtis, my friends who I do ayahuasca with. Who Curtis works with Joe Rogan at his club, and um, okay, so and then Haley's a teacher, she's cool, whatever. Anyway, so they come over, they want to watch. We have the big TV, we got surround sound, it's so fun. Or I can't remember what we're watching. We're having a good time. Todd makes popcorn. I don't know how to make it, obviously. I like Todd make the popcorn. He makes the popcorn, puts it in a bowl. If you put it near me. It's not like people had maybe one kernel each. Yes. And I like, I'm telling you what the second time it happened with the second couple where I ate the entire thing of yes. popcorn. And then I would make, I make Todd make another one and then I eat the next one too. Oh, now I I'm see high. why you don't invite me over for popcorn. No, I want, I want, competition. I don't want to be eating all the popcorn. I don't want to be eating and all the popcorn. The great thing about, I don't have popcorn guilt at all. That is such a happy food for yes. me. I never feel bad. So yeah. load it up. But Todd make more. But Todd knows if he makes more, I'm going to be mad at him because I'm going to eat it again. <laughs> Poor but Todd. Was like, I Todd was like, doesn't know what to do. He's standing while the shaking at the machine. More or less. No, no. Todd has been trained. His mom's so crazy. I love her. Vanessa, you're the best. But she, he is trained for me. His, he's got a cool slice. He slices that packet open. He's like, my girlfriend's crazy and it's never going to stop. And that's just how it is. And I'm cool as a and cucumber. And I'm cool as a fucking cucumber. Here's your popcorn, bitch. And, um, but so the second time it happened, I realized... I literally like black out. So the popcorn comes. I black out. I wake up. I'm like, wasn't there a Tin Man? Was there like a? I'm like, where are my red shoes? Many M. Like, literally like you were there Togo. too. Yeah, I'm like, and you, and you. I mean, it was just like, it, it's like, so it has to stop. And so popcorn is why I stopped smoking weed. That's the real. This is the worst thing you could ever say to me. Like, I am upset. Listen, here's why I didn't hypnotize myself to never smoke weed. Because for the show and for our Community, content and our entertainment, our communal I bond. will obviously eat edibles on the show and do stuff like that. If I hypnotize myself, I won't be able to do it. So I'm mm. not, I'm just not, I'm just taking my break from weed. Whoa. Yeah. Because I'll never smoke a cigarette again mm. after hypnotizing Because me. of hypnotism. I, it's in my identity now that I'm not, a, I don't smoke cigarettes. I can't, like when I want, I can't. There's nothing. So being hypnotized works. Mm -hmm. What would you like to be hypnotized I out of, J Esther? don't know. But I'm doing like a habits thing where well, I'm using it as like ha a habit to change actually, a bad habit. I know exactly what. I, when I wake up in the morning and if it's not a morning where like, oh, you have to be here, you know, like shooting or whatever, like a show, whatever. Um... I will really lay in bed for like an hour. The idea before that you I start thought the day. audience might think you were going to a shooting range and you had to clarify. <laughs> I did clarify because of you, that. What did you shooting what? I no, I meant shooting when I was said shooting, I was thinking of Dollface. And when I said like a show, I was thinking of this, oh, okay. which makes no sense because they're the same thing. I yeah. would like to see you in a shooting range. I would love that. We should definitely do that. hundred <laughs> percent. 
Yeah. We can bring my new gun. <laughs> oh, what do you got? I don't know what it is. Todd bought it. <laughs> but it's a good one. It's the one from Pulp Fiction. That's all I know. And he has a gun. We all know the days of this oh, show are numbered because one of us <laughs> won't be around. Can you imagine me bringing it? <laughs> I want to go to tactical training for it. I want to learn how to like roll around and shoot. <laughs> I want to be able to pop up, roll around, shoot, shoot back. We used to go to the desert when I lived in Nevada and just shoot. We'd um, fill up things with water like pumpkins and stuff and we would just fire away all day. Uh, yeah, it was my Vegas days, but I have pictures that I feel like do not. Because you look like a gun bitch? I look like a gun bitch. That's great. That's funny. I look like a... And George, <laughs> what the fuck is going on with George? He's getting all horny about the guns. Oh my God, he hasn't I been around it. us without his child for a while. So now he's really going crazy. George, is it banana break time? Yes, it is. Get a banana. I'm sad. I liked the little banana. Oh, he started getting shorter ones to remind us of Hawaii. <laughs> Do you guys have any New Year's resolutions? God, I'd have to think about that. I'm not sure. Kalila's like, <laughs> her resolution is not seeing us. and <laughs> She doesn't know how to explain it <laughs> on the show. Say it for me, Esther. <laughs> this is Apple Cider, everyone. So Yay. And I know when you say don't freak out, you're talking to me. <laughs> well. Oh, am I supposed to wait? Yes. You wait till <laughs> for the ball to drop. <laughs> then I'll lose the phone. That's a good the point. The phone is not the part the bubbly you're supposed to pour it so there's less foam yeah pete, pete was what not the a fuck <laughs> yes i love it when pete's here so i'm not the only one getting i know at. well when this carlos is, so... is here you guys really get a break yeah. you really <laughs> get a break um i feel like this is gonna sound crazy Uh oh. every day is my new year's resolution i've been like really working on my shit so i don't have anything like specific but every night is new year's eve every night's new year's <laughs> eve baby i'm fucking Celebrating that ball. Balls are dropping. What do you guys usually up. do for New Year's? Stand up. Nothing. Oh, you guys at the store? I hate when you do stand up, you're like, and then I saw my dad's dick. Oh, wait. Okay, guys, it's time. Okay, 10, yeah. 9, 8. That's been drunk. really crappy for me to be on the road with Bobby for New Year's. Just that in random interruption in the beginning. And then he's trying to look for me in the crowd because we're supposed to do a midnight kiss. Yeah. Oh, and the midnight kiss search yeah. is a nightmare. We're it's like, a, where's it's a the, misery. You got to go through a crowd. Yeah. You know? And he's like, babe, babe, where the fuck are you? And he's on. <laughs> Cut to midnight. Uh, Esther New Year's. pops up. I have Kalila. a handcuff Kalila <laughs> five minutes before midnight. Oops, I drink, sorry. I, um, yeah, I was talking to this girl today who said that she, um, she and her friend, who she had like a falling out with, so they're not doing it this year, but they would always do like a lead a meditation through New Year's. Oh, that's cool. Because she's like, why would we be partying and getting wasted the things that we're doing that are kind of like our gluttony that we want to leave behind? Why would we be going into the New Year with that? And she's like, I and then, agree. Yeah. And then once they meditate, they do their like what they want to manifest for the year and their Imagine that's a good point mm -hmm. because Having a hangover on the first day of the calendar year is to to just gym. not it. It doesn't make sense. You should be waking up early and getting a head start. I, I love that. And also, like, my favorite New Year's Eve activity is, like, going to the grocery store, stocking my fridge. Like, For what, Y2K? <laughs> what <about> stocking your <laughs> fridge? She's, like, getting all the canned goods to put in the basement. For COVID-22. <laughs> <laughs> What the hell is wrong with you? I don't, I don't know. You say things like they're so normal. That's what's like, you know how everyone does. They stock up. <laughs> Everyone's wasted partying. Wait, Esther, do you do the store too? Or do you just chill at home? I've only done the store a few times. I don't like being in West Hollywood on New oh. Year's Eve. Do you? Oh, I'm sorry. Did you think it was the fun of being at your home club? Oh, no, no. <laughs> You're on the road with a bunch yeah. of weirdos. Like, why the fuck did you come to the show? Oh, I've done this comedy store on New Year's Eve. Yeah. Have you ever done it on Halloween dressed up? No. I've seen some really epic costumes where we're like, that is nudity. We're like, wow, girl. Wait, in Hollywood, yeah. Um, what's going on? <laughs> say uh, the girl, name, say the I'll name. I'll just say the name because it's not even any shade. I like her and she's cool and she's pregnant and shit now. But Eliza Sessinger came in like a, she was Ronda Rousey once, but she's like, <laughs> she's, she's like, she's like not the same ripped as you because she's thicker than you. So she's like, she's like where, like, she's like got like the, side cuts the, and everything. The Britney and like, Spears thing. So she'll, and then she'll like, she had like really low cut like boxer shorts I feel like and she came in and she was like, and it was like, your, your body's so hot, it's very weird. It's like very distracting on stage. Yeah. But she, I remember when she came in on that. 
Um, I don't know. That's all. <laughs> That's all going to be edited Say the out. Other name <laughs> and edit it out. Who else was it? I don't know. No, I just you. I'm trying to think of anyone pause, else. So like I just remember her coming in. I was like, <laughs> I "Wow, you are it. naked. <laughs> that is weird." It's probably really cold out too. But also, I feel like if she didn't have such a good body, it wouldn't have been as like surprising but and shocking. If you don't have a good body, it's it's a funny costume. It's, it's a fun, better off. costume. It's but just it's like, like imagine if you're like, "I'm Rhonda." Off season when I'm not yes, trying to cut weight. But I think that she literally like maybe she trained for that because I like that, too. I like to have like a th I trained for Hawaii and now I'm going to train for our billboard shoot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> whenever that is. <laughs> By the way, George, can I just tell you, you saying I need to know whether you guys want to do the billboard <laughs> or the live show first is why do they have to be? Can't they be next to each other? <laughs> can't they be done at the same time? Uh it, they're slow. Some things move slow, but we could do back-to-back -back weeks. I just need to know what to prioritize right now because we're so close on everything. Right, okay. And it, have you talked to Bart? Because Bart keeps hitting yeah, us yeah. up about, about live shows. I think we should That's consult Esther, our business manager, yeah. oh. ultimately, for the answer. Oh, I spent some money yesterday, Esther. Whatever we can do to keep the costs down, I'm a happy person. <laughs> and I'm here to keep the costs up and her unhappy. <laughs> I thrive when Esther's and miserable. And that is why the show works. <laughs> <laughs> Are we going to have a sip or yeah. this? Is this Martinelli's mm -hmm. shout out <laughs> to the younger Apple years? Apple use. No. I think we should um, say something to the slug fam and wish them well. Yeah. Um, but I'm not good at that. So you guys do the New Year's speech. <laughs> All right. Kalila's not good at podcasting. The thing she's really good at. So the thing she's really excellent at, she's not good at. But um, All right, slugs. Um, 2020 was wild, was it not? It's we been were 2021. I've got to get to it. I've got to get to it. They think I'm actually that dumb. Like that's, yes. well, I can, I can get yes, it. Yes, we think you don't know what year 2020 it is. 2020 was a rough year, but I'll tell you one good thing that came out of it. We came up with a idea for 2021. True. Which was mm -hmm. this podcast. Mm -hmm. It shockingly has worked. It's Shocking. so weird. <laughs> Um, on camera, everything is excellent. And <laughs> That's all you need to know. <laughs> no, it's camera. good. It's the best. It's like so easy. It's so fun. It's such a treat. Like I going have... on the road, meeting all of you guys has been incredible. Talking to you guys. The energy that you feel towards us, we feel back at you. We're all so happy and so excited that you are entertained by our bullshit. Like we really are. Yeah. And what about the fact like now I feel like I have a safe space where I can share what I'm going through in my life and what I'm feeling about certain things. The and fact like you think this is a safe space is how <laughs> crazy you are. Do you see when people are like, she's too mean to Esther? I'm like, it's her safe space. She likes it. <laughs> it's where she wants to be. <laughs> but like, I feel like we found this community of slugs that understand us and we understand them. And especially meeting them on the road mm -hmm. has been like a huge deal. I don't know. I'm, I'm just, I do feel grateful for you guys, honestly, I, yeah. I, it pains me to say it, <laughs> but I feel so grateful that you guys are people that exist in the same timeline as me. Is that why you didn't eat your banana? <laughs> she's Now she's back to no bananas. I'm going to have my banana while you guys have your drink. Um, yeah. What else? Kyla, say something. I'm not on the road like you guys, so I don't see this community as much. Right. You haven't felt that. Um, but um, I do feel a different kind of love. Like I, I have been doing Tiger Belly for seven years now and sitting next to Bobby is a different dynamic. And I do feel a little bit more loved here mm. um, with that's the so fan sad. base that we've created. <laughs> oh, I thought you meant by us. I was like, that's really No, no, sad. no. <laughs> Not in this room oh my specifically. God. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Not in this room specifically, but just by, you know, like I read all of your messages. Um, there isn't one that I miss. And honestly, it's just nice to have a girl gang and the yeah. boy slugs. And we love our boy slugs. Yeah. yeah. Generally fucking open How cool and accepting it? of three very different people on, on mics. You know, we're not your, you know, we're crass. We're not your prototypical girls next door mm -hmm. but thank you for accepting us just the way we are in all of our faulty faulty ways we're like <laughs> if three weird women moved into the house next to you and you're like what's up with them yeah we're like the what were the girls the okay the three witches in um hocus pocus yeah oh, which one am i bet yeah. midler do i get to be better? no you're sarah jessica parker because you're blonde which is so unfair okay what are you <laughs> 
Are we gonna <laughs> no, fight? I'm Kathy Najimi one. and she's Bette Midler. She's a Kathy Najimi's character is very cute though. But you're right, Annie's the hot, <laughs> the hot blonde. I'm Bette Midler. I'm happy to be Bette Midler. Yeah, that's the that is the, kind of the best. Yeah. Part. I tried to be her, but nobody was loving. <laughs> and I am still posh. I do want to say, no, for the you're new not. Year, for this new year, I want to let everyone know I'm fucking posh. No one can say anything about it. It's done. Agreed. This is me. they don't say I have my gun. <laughs> I read. You're gonna have to prove it. This Tie your hair. All this podcast is gonna get real different now that they know about my. I'm packing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, che- cheers. Yes, Cheers. bitches, thank you. This to has been such a good year. I've had such a good time. I'm excited for more. And to- <laughs> <laughs> Far enough. <laughs> yeah. That was very symbiotic. <laughs> what of you is going to move? Symbolic, I mean, that symbolic. could have been a more... There couldn't have been a greater parallel to our relationship than that exact moment. The You're only like, thing that would have been better, though, is mutual <laughs> yeah. goodbye. Well, yeah. Carlos, would Carlos, you come in here and uh, cheers That's what I was going to say. Yeah, if Carlos came and, like, clinked to them, it would have been perfect. <laughs> <laughs> or Todd. Todd, just help. Todd, God damn it. It's actually quite delicious. I know. I love a good I love this apple stuff. cider. Can we talk about the sharing food thing? Because I want to know what your feelings, why it annoys you. Mm. Oh, no. Mine is just... Um, I don't know how to make of someone like that. I have no judgments about people and their sharing foods. I just don't understand it because right. I, it's always family style eating in like Asian culture. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like, I've, you know, oh, yeah. what's remember, mine is yours. Like I remember food-wise. my first day in, uh, in the Philippines. Yeah. And it, that, that's fun unless you're standing next to Bobby. <laughs> and half the food that goes in his mouth comes back out. Oh, and I was like, telling I don't, jokes. I, I didn't. I was like, this looks really good, but I want to stand over there next to somebody else. Oh, that yeah, is yeah. funny. Yeah. Where it's like, Esther, thank you for not sharing food. Actually, no, well, I think is, you are helping us. It is like a germ thing for me because people sometimes there's no serving spoon and people just go in with their. Personal but are you spoon. saving us from your germs? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think like, I feel like, are you saying that like, if this is something that they don't do, then you're like, I don't know where you are in the rest of the world too. I just don't like, here's my thing. For sure. If a guy was like that, I would not date him. I yeah. agree. That's like, because I'm like, what the fuck, dude? Like yeah. you should be able to, you have communal eating, right? I had a boyfriend with PTSD who like hated his mother so much for her beating him. Um, but he still liked her, but he was, you know, it was in there. He, um, if you went to reach for his food, it was like a dog. Like he would be so mad and he's like, get oh!" And then he would go into a whole thing about his mom, how his mom would never share food. Oh, fuck. And he would get back into it and you're like, oh, okay. Um, I will get my own. Thank you. <laughs> but that, then he became like his mom. Yeah. He saying. would turn into, yeah. And he would go back into the thing. That's Guys, if you have PTSD, you can get through it. You got to work on it. Please, Lord. God. I had I once dated a guy who in the middle of the night had really bad dreams. I swear to God, like his oh. past life was a nom or something. Yeah. Because he would hold night me terrors. down. Yeah, night That's terrors. how he was too. Wow. Yeah. It's, that's scary. He and would hold you down. He would hold me down or like grab me. Yeah. And I'd like pull away and he would like hold Yeah, it's but he it, would wake having me night up terrors. In my face, he'd go like he'd go, I'm dying. I'm dying. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, You're alive, please. Whoop, go over there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm dying. I'm dying. Like it would be more like, help me, I'm dying. And I'm like, no. Wow, I really haven't dated much. <laughs> you guys both have gotten like squeezed in the night. I didn't get squeezed. Okay. You I got, got yelled, uh, at. yelled into giving blowjobs though. <laughs> 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 when I was in a dead slumber, but PTSD blowjob. Oh, I was like, I, I, that was a racket, Annie. Yeah, isn't, I think it, yeah. was isn't it weird when your PTSDs end up with their D and your <laughs> P, P and <laughs> S and D? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what boy. do you guys want for 2022? I want more slugs. I want more yeah. travel. I want to be doing more stand up. I want to yeah. expand my set. I want to keep entertaining people. I want to keep honing in on the things that I feel like I'm here to do. And it's just been so fun. I just want to keep riding. What about you, Esther? I feel very similar. I want this show to continue to thrive. Um, I feel super proud like of how far and fast we've gotten and i just want to keep going um and maybe we'll get a 
all got real tattoos that match. Um, I don't know. They all say Kalila. <laughs> <laughs> Kalila's got a Kalila tattoo. <laughs> that's actually so funny to get your own name. <laughs> yeah. Wait, that we there are people that do so that. Funny. That's amazing. I always wonder that. Where it's, it's like, like marrying yourself. Like, are you? Do you? Are you? Do you think you're gonna forget who you are? <laughs> oh, that you need a reminder. It's like memento. Yeah. Oh my God, memento. Oh, that's what I wanted to ask. Speaking of names, when you meet someone who has the name who has a- named Annie or Esther, are you freaked out by yes. that at all? Because it's so rare for me, yeah. Does it ever happen to you? Well, so it has how often never... do you go to the old folks' home? <laughs> <laughs> Esther's hanging out at the Holocaust Memorial, hearing her name left and right. <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> I want to know what the feeling is like because I've never met anyone named Kalila. Because oh, I'm like, yeah. I would be so freaked out. I'd be like, that's not you. If someone was like, I'm Kalila, I'm like, no, you're not. No, the fuck you're not. I'd probably fight them. Well, that is, well, it is like a weird, name your kids Kalila. They're they going to get their asses Yeah, a lot beat. of babies are named Kalila now. They'll always send me the really? baby pictures. And it, I like that because they're babies. But if an adult, my age, were like, I'm Kalila, I would fucking just drop it's that bitch. It's so funny that even though people love you, Esther, they'll never name their kid after you. Never. It's a horrible It's like could be totally like but I, I actually do think, though, that my name will come back in the It's style. already coming oh, well, back. It no, it is. Because it's, it's been so old. But when yeah. I had it, it was not in style. I think um, I've had a lot of Annies in my life. There was Annie Cox and Annie Dick. There was a girl in my <laughs> college named Annie Dick I was friends with. And the girl in my Quaker Youth Retreats was Annie And how Cox. do you feel? Like, do you, what do you call them by their last name or do you call them Annie? I call them Annie, but I was never that close. I mean, Annie Dick, I was close with, but I—it's hard to get close to someone with your name. Really? And that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, do you feel weird? Who's, ta- who's are you ca- talking to me or her? It's like so confusing. Well, I heard that when people have the same names, they just call each other by the last names. Oh yeah, and I feel like at my—I went to a small school, high school, college, and uh, both of them were small. But my college, so they—I was flashing Annie because I used to always flash my tits. <laughs> that was how they knew me. That's a great name. Though. I just called you Flash. The flat. Oh my God, guys! I have a new name. I love the Flash. Flash. That's such a good name. I we, feel like you're Flash, too. Junior, Flashy, Flash. I, I used to Flash people, but that name. I know a person that had the nickname. The actually, Jenna's ex boyfriend. His nickname was the Flash. Why? I don't know. Came fast. Was he? Fa- <laughs> <laughs> it oh. seems like an insult, honestly. It, to it the boy. is. Yeah, that's interesting. So I don't know. No, I have no idea when he came or not. I like fast comers. You're not. You that like good friends, fast huh? comers. I love fast comers. Yeah, it's not a problem. Yeah, it's not yeah. a problem for me. Long comers when they think they're doing you a favor, uh, you're like, oh stop. my Wait, god, stop with the long coming, guys. This is a crazy thing that I just thought about. I was thinking about all the guys I dated when I was in my early twenties, which is like two, whatever. But how they came really fast, and like. Because you were hotter? I'm like, is it because is it because they were young or is it because I was 21 and it, they were fucking a 21-year-old? They, they just didn't they, learn. They're young. Yeah, I think it takes time because I've, like if I ask Bobby or my friends now who are in their 30s, they all came fast when they were younger. Yeah. But then you kind of like learn how to mm. manage the that part of. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. I was like, is this a me issue? No, it was just young. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so. <laughs> takes days. days. <laughs> Weeks. <laughs> <laughs> We're calling out. We're fucking again. (laughs) That is, I did hook up with one of my ex-boyfriends and this was so painful. He like, afterwards he was like pulling up pictures of us in college and he was like, oh, look how hot you were when you were 21. Fuck. I was like, I just fucked you. No. And I think I'm hotter than that because I'm not a pedophile. So I'm like, I look at that. I'm like, I was like, my cheeks were so puffed. Like I was so little. Yeah. I was so young. I'm like, okay. Someone once said to me, and he really thought he was paying me a compliment. He was like, you know what I love about your face? How big your pores are on your cheeks. That's crazy. He didn't mean pores. He must have meant like the apple. No, because I do have like very (laughs) visible pores right here. Why would someone be in But no, he was like, no, I love that. He's like, I love that. And I'm like, please never tell your next girlfriend that you love her gigantic fucking pores. Guys, I'm going to take you to get... IVs, high Gl- glutathione. Glutathione. Do you think I mean, he thought- I got it too yesterday. I mean, I have a spray tan too. So you yeah, I was going to say, is that the, we, you got not a the tan? same one? I got another one. Did he I like, like your pores? Like, did he? He did. He genuinely did. Did he come on your face and like maybe he thought he could get you pregnant through that? <laughs> <laughs> what I like about you is I can get you pregnant without inserting. <laughs> oh, um, I do love a good nut butt. <laughs> Oh what? You know when they can't come come in you, so they come in the back of you. <laughs> in your butt? Yeah, in your butt, you just blow their load all up in, in that, inside your butt. So you your butt. Much, huh? I yeah. just the th- like 
to just let someone go in the butt just for that, it's like it hurts it drips so much. It's the final thing. It's no, just the I final don't thing. Like, I'm not into anal. It yet. hurts. So I don't much. either. I don't like it. Yeah. But they don't have to go in to squirt it. But yes, they, can, Esther. they squirt on the crack. But the oh. problem is, I'm always afraid it's going to drip in. I'm going to get pregnant that way. No, you can prevent that. <laughs> now I know what you're saying. We're good. She has dated after all. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, oh, I dated a lot. <laughs> She's like, any of you dated? That's really weird. No, I hate when I'm always like, when you have to when you have to go like clean yourself and you have to like hold you have to cup it mm -hmm. so it doesn't yes. drip everywhere. Sure. What are you guys' thoughts on dudes that don't offer a warm towel after to clean you? I up? like the idea of them being like like at the spa and they have like a warm <laughs> yes. thing of Asia. I want it to be I want them to have like a um a towel the warmer tongue to bring it to me. Yep. Oh my god, that's so cute. That should be a requirement. Well, more I escorts think. will have that with us. Oh, yeah, you'll yes. you buy that for I us. I will for sure. Well, you're our pimp. Well, yeah. Wait, you're our pimp. So wait, we're the ones that have to fuck now, and you're not. <laughs> How no, does this she's, work? She's gonna be. She just costs more. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just a. No, I could be a taste tester. Yeah, they're like, do you want the owner oh, or what? do you want of the trainees? <laughs> I could be a taste she's... tester. So like, I'm, I'm going to see, this is how good of a pimp I am. I am going to go in there first. I'm going to examine their penises for bumps, <laughs> for weird lesions, for smells. And then I will do just a couple blows, right? Just a yeah, couple. Yeah, just a couple. Yeah. And then see if he's a, you know, a fine young gentleman and pass him over to you. No, you blindfold him and then you leave the room and then we go in. Yes. <laughs> I was just watching a Final Destination when that happened. It was Final Destination 5. Have you not watched those movies? They're the best movies. They're the funniest No, but movies. that's probably exactly what I'm looking for. So thank you. I'm okay, going to watch so them Okay, so you know all. what the premise is? Yes. That, yeah, they they, they, were supposed they to... escape. Someone has a vision of them all dying. Mm -hmm. And then they escape in time. And then, you know, destiny comes to get them yeah. each time. So in this one, there was a guy getting, he went to go get a rub and tug at an Asian <laughs> massage parlor. And the woman was so mad at how rude he was being the hot chick at the desk that she's like, okay. So she brings him in. Then she just brings this old lady in. And the old lady's like giving him all these, um, you know, pins for acupuncture and stuff. And then something happens, like a fire starts or something, and he rolls over and he falls on all of them. But that doesn't kill him because Final Destination, there's always like 20 things happening that could kill him. And so he rolls over, then the fire starts and then it comes towards him and he's like, ah, and he's like, escapes it. The fire goes out. He's like, oh, thank God. And then a big Buddha comes and smacks and crushes his head. Spoiler alert. That's only one of the deaths. There's so many beautiful deaths. So many gorgeous ones. Todd and I are going to write a final destination. 17. <laughs> Oh, well, I guess it's come time that we will see our slugs next year next after this. Year. Mm -hmm. And wow. we love you so much. This has been so cool. Yeah. Wait, I want to ask you guys something to go into the new year if yeah. you think this is true. Do you feel like the more you learn about life, about yourself, about the your higher self, do you think that you – I always feel like I when I was a baby, I was born and I knew like everything. And then I forgot it and I'm relearning stuff. Do you feel that way? I feel a similar thing, which is that not when I was a baby, but when I was a little kid, I had this. I think this is common, though. Like I had this like spirit and energy that has slowly faded and I'm like trying to always reignite it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's always there. Maybe and you got to stop staring at the ceiling, bitch. <laughs> Go outside. Papa gummy. What? Papa gummy. Watch a final destination. Do you have that, Kalila? Like spiritually, not what the fuck she was talking about. Yeah. Esther, you threw me off there for a second. Okay. Wait, what were you saying, Annie? Yeah, it made sense. No, to like me. you know when you like learn more about yourself, yeah, yeah, and yeah. you're like you you hear these things, and you're like, damn, like oh, and it feels like you already knew it as a baby. Like I feel like we're born into the universe with like the the knowledge. Okay. And then once we like we make some sort of like deal where it's like if we're gonna communicate, we have to like forget everything. And so then mm. once you start talking stuff, you don't remember it. But I just feel like when I'm learning all these things and I'm like growing as a person and finding myself out that it feels like I'm like, oh, I you remember knew that. this. Yeah. You're, it's a, you're con so connected to it. Yeah. Okay. Clyla? I guess in a sense, yeah, there is like a purity in childhood and maybe there is this like, you know, you almost want to like recapture that like blissful state that you're in when you're a child, that wonder, that excitement, that lack of judgment, that fearlessness that you're just like, I'm going to do that, that sponge like nature to be like, I'm going to absorb the world and everything around me. But as you get older and a lot of these things happen to you. Yes. yes. You so you just are explaining yes. mine. Yes. What? That's how you. <laughs> She's explaining yes. the thing I said. Well, you I didn't apologize. say it as well. <laughs> I agree. I, I, I honestly, agree. I was like, "What is this bitch talking about?" I was like, "Ah, oh, yes, Kalaya." And then, um, 
<laughs> but you lose that. Bad things happen. You start to overthink. This big adult brain of yours starts to get in your own but way. But I think it's just like conditioning, right? But, right. So once you shed that and you, mm -hmm. you really work at trying to shed those things that aren't real and you get back to the core of yourself, you will find that fearlessness and that like vitality and that want to, you know, to live a big life. And yeah, so... But it's hard to get through that thick layer that you build. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, you know, you got to kind of shed a second skin. And you have a choice in it too. Because I always feel like old people either like bloom out or bloom go in, mm. you know? So I think for 2022, we should all... Bloom. Bloom, bloom out. Hell yeah. We're late bloomers. That's all it is. Yeah. We're just a little late to bloom. Well, who's but younger than us doing better than us? We're doing good. <laughs> I, think we're, I think we're blooming right on time here. We're doing good. We're on time bloomers. Yeah. And we hope that you guys bloom with us. Shed that shit, bitch. We'll see you guys Bye next guys. year. Cheers. Bye.